Hello and welcome to today's episode, which is all about getting to know that plant-based staple, tofu. Before going vegan, I hadn't really eaten much tofu, I don't think. You might also see it called bean curd. I bought a few vegan cookbooks when I first started and that had some tofu recipes in there. And then in the last few years, I've kind of started building on that and experimenting with it a bit more. I figure there's probably several people in the same position and <laughs> don't really know what to do with it. I had a comment on the tofu Kiev that I did a few weeks ago, and that kind of triggered the idea for this. The person was saying they didn't really know much about tofu. So I thought, well, well I'll do a bit of a deep dive and tell you a little bit about it, what you can do with it and the different types. Tofu has a bit of a bad rep because it's a very bland product. It doesn't taste of much at all, but if you boiled chicken without any seasonings. That's also quite bland. So it's about what you do with it, what you put on it, inside it, and make it taste delicious. I've made it before once, and it is a fairly easy process. You need to cook down some soybeans and then make a milk by blending it with water. Then you add in a coagulant, so an acid or a salt typically. I use lemon juice to make that batch, which worked fine. People say lemon juice isn't ideal because it has the lemon flavor to it. In commercial processing, they use things like gypsum. I can't quite remember the chemical name of it. It's calcium something, but they use different uh, calcium types. I think some magnesium, something like that. I had a quick look online before I started rolling to see if I could find the exact process, like the chemical process of what's happening when you curdle soy milk and I couldn't really find anything definitive. I'll stick a link to the article that I read and it's saying one possible explanation is that the photons in the acid interacts with the amino acids, like the molecules in the amino acids and causes the curdling. It's a very similar process to making cheese. In cheese making, you take milk and then you curdle that and then take the whey away. <laughs> uh, which is the kind of li the liquid part and that's exactly the same in tofu. So you make your soy milk, add your coagulant and then leave it and then once it's curdled you're left with kind of solid masses and then you filter away the, the liquid that's in there, the water. If you've ever put soy milk in coffee and you start getting kind of bittiness in there you're effectively making tofu because the acid in the coffee splits the soy milk even though most commercial soy milks have got a stabilizer in them, you get to a certain amount of acid and it will just split. I've harnessed that property to make a couple of sauces in the past. I haven't done any videos with it. Maybe I will in the future. But I added lemon juice to soy milk and then some custard powder for really sort of lemony custard loveliness. And then I also made a coffee sauce as well, again with the custard powder. It was the custard powder that I made for the jammy custards. I'll stick a link to that in the description for you. Very easy to make. Tofu's been popular in Asia for... <laughs> Hello, wee man. I've grabbed him quickly while he's walking past. Are you going to say hi, Bam Bam? No. Tofu's been in existence for it's thought to be about 2,000 years. It goes back to the Han Dynasty in China and then it's kind of filtered out into the wider world since then. It's a product that's low in calories, but high in protein. So for example, on the back of this packet, it's saying per 100 grams, there's 145 calories and there's 16.5 grams of protein. It's also fairly low fat as well. So there's 7.8 grams of fat to 1.2 of which are saturated. It's also high in iron, and depending on what they use as the coagulant, it can contain magnesium and calcium as well. So there's some other kind of nutrients in there. There are four main types of tofu. You've got your silken, firm, extra firm, and super firm. And then within that, there's some slight variations. The firmer it is, the less water it is in there, and the more solid that there is. Silken tofu is a really nice one because you can buy it in these Tetra packs and it just lives in the cupboard. It doesn't need to go in the fridge until you've opened it. If I've understood the process correctly, they don't take out any of the liquid from that. So it's just the solid mass of, of the bean, the soy milk that has the proteins in there as well as the water. It's very fragile, so you can't do a lot with it in terms of uh, you know, frying it or anything like that. It just, it crumbles apart really easily, but you can harness that property as I'll talk through in a minute. I only tend to buy really silken and extra firm. I'm not such a fan of the firm. I just not firm enough. <laughs> I like kind of the meatier texture that extra firm has. And I don't know if I've tried super firm yet, but I will keep an eye out for it. <laughs> this is the extra firm. This comes out of the fridge and it'll often come in like a plastic bag. And if I can show that on camera, you can see it's in a little bit of water just to keep it 
you know, moist so it doesn't dry out. Flavoured tofus are becoming more and more widely available now. There's a brand in the UK, I want to say Typhon it's called, um, and it's got almonds inside it and sesame seeds and then they smoke it so it goes really dense and it's got an incredible flavour. The texture is a bit like halloumi cheese, it's that kind of density to it. I bought a packet of smoked tofu and it hadn't been smoked at all, it was just soaked in like liquid smoke, like there was liquid smoke in the water. So it had the flavour but the texture it was no different than an extra firm tofu. Once you've made your soy milk in preparation for making tofu, you get left with the bean solids, and that's called okara. I've used that to make fish cakes. It's easy to flavor them up with a bit of lemon juice and some seaweed, and it's got kind of a, a flaky texture a little bit. It looks a bit similar to the chickpea tuna salad that I made, which would stand to reason because it's just shredded beans, like broken down beans. You can also add that to baking, so it works as a really nice bulking agent, and it's also quite high protein as well, so it works quite well. You can dry it down and then powder it if you want a sort of a flour type thing or you know I've just put I put portions into the freezer and I just pull them out and if I'm making a soup or something like that you can pop a bit in there as well. If you go to Chinese supermarkets or Asian restaurants that kind of thing you might come across tofu skin so what that is is when you boil soy milk it develops a skin on top just the same as dairy milk does and what they do is they lift the skin off and then that can be used as a wrapper or it can be shredded and used as an ingredient. I've seen people on uh, TikTok and YouTube make like a chicken drumstick from shreds of the tofu skin wrapped up in a whole piece of tofu skin and it works quite well. I made the washed flour seitan chicken drumsticks and I tried to wrap the outside in a tofu skin. I brought the dry skin, yuba it's called, and it was just too fragile, it just fell apart really quickly. If I try to do that technique again I'll see if I can find some fresh skins because they're not nearly as fragile and to use the skin all you need to do is soak it in water or you can soak in a bit of stock if you want some extra flavor in there. Picked up some frozen dumplings from the Chinese supermarket just something I can eat when I've got no energy to cook and it's made with the bean curd sheets and uh, chives in this one so it's got little shreds of the the yuba in there yeah, and it's just a nice bit of texture, a bit of protein. The only reason I don't make my own tofu more is that I haven't been able to make it not beany in flavour. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird way of describing it. Um, but yeah, it tastes... It's a very kind of green flavour, which isn't necessarily unpleasant, but it's noticeable. Uh, and it's quite dominant in the dish. Um, so yeah, once I crack making unbeany soy milk, then I'll be making my own tofu again. <laughs> because it's so much cheaper. You know, you can buy big like kilo bags of soybeans and you only need a small amount per batch. I tend to press my tofu. Now I don't think it's done much in Asia, but sort of the Westerners tend to press it. All that means is forcing liquid out of the tofu because then it, it just acts like more of a sponge for marinades and things like that. You can buy tofu presses. I've just never bothered because they're quite bulky in size. And to say I'm only going to be pressing tofu with it, it just seems a bit excessive, really. But, you know, perhaps in the future at some point. All I do for it is cut it into the slices that I want and then layer it in between towels and then put heavy weight on top and leave that for like half hour, 45 minutes. And that does the job really well. I'll talk through a few recipes where I've used tofu so you can kind of watch things and see what you can do with it. As a main component, sort of rather than as an ingredient, I made the crispy tofu with the nudie snack coating on it so that was just slices of tofu and then that was like dipped in a crumb coating and fried made the herb stuffed tofu cut a slice down the middle of a slice of tofu so it was like a pocket inside and stuffed that with a chili and herb paste i coated the outside of those in kitchat manis which is like a sticky sweet soy sauce condiment type and mix that with some tamarind paste which is a kind of sour, rich, very tangy, delicious sauce. Mix the two together, brushed it on. I air fried that one and the texture went really dense, like very meaty, almost pork-like, that kind of toughness to it. That gave me the idea to try doing like a vegan chicken Kiev. For that one, I cut a pocket again and then stuffed it with garlic and herb butter. And then the outside, I made like an egg wash with some vegan scrambled egg mix with a bit of oat milk and then dipped it in panko. I brushed on some chicken flavour stock powder onto the outside of that just to sort of boost up the chicken flavour. I had planned on doing it inside as well, but I used frozen tofu on that one so it went for a bit crumbly and delicate because I don't want to mess around with it too much. Um, but yeah, that worked really well. <laughs> I think it was delicious. 
Freezing tofu changes the texture of it quite radically. It forces more of the, the liquid out of it and then it creates lots of little air pockets inside there, like a sponge. <laughs> so the texture goes chewier, but it does become more delicate. In the past, I made the tofu pork. I cut it into slices and covered the outside really liberally with chicken flavor stock and then air fried it for, I think 15, 20 minutes or so until it was a bit golden in places. I did that at 180. And then I dropped the temperature to the lowest setting on the air fryer off the top of my head. I think it was 100 degrees, 75 degrees maybe. And then did that for a, an hour or two and it dried out the tofu. Then I rehydrated it in stock and the texture goes really, really chewy. And it was very pork-like. I've used the extra firm tofu in a few different recipes as a, an ingredient. I made a chicken Kiev by mixing the tofu with some buckwheat flour and some other bits and pieces and kind of shaped that into a patty and then stuffed that with garlic butter. I did the same sort of thing to make the vegan sausages, the ones that were wrapped in rice paper so it had like a skin on the outside. I flavoured those to be like a vegan chorizo sausage. There's lots of smoked paprika, lots of garlic. Mmm, delicious. I did a video where I made three different things from one mixture. It's the complete protein trio. So I made burgers, meatballs and koftas and I'd mixed extra firm tofu with some quinoa that was the complete proteins and then bound that with pea protein vital wheat gluten that kind of thing and then different flavorings for the different ones the koftas had like middle eastern spices and the burgers had onions meatballs had some mediterranean type spices so it's a very versatile mixture that you can use for lots of different things i've made a type of meat substitute using tofu as well and i bound that with i want to say psyllium husk and some other bits and pieces but tofu is the main substrate seitan's a very popular meat substitute but it's made with gluten so celiacs or anyone who's gluten intolerant can't eat it so i thought oh, i'd look around to see what gluten-free options are available the texture comes out really nice it's kind of firm and then you can slice it and snack on it instead of putting it in the freezer like i did <laughs> what i'll do for dinner sometimes if i don't have much energy to cook is make like a kind of ramen and just do lots of veggies some noodles broth and then just slices of tofu and it's a very simple thing to throw together because all the veggies are cold <laughs> so it's you know they're raw so you just bang everything in and the heat of the broth warms everything through so yeah you don't need to go to huge lengths to make something taste tasty you can also marinate tofu um, same as you would for meat so just press it just to make it more absorbent marinate it for you know an hour at least ideally not you know if you haven't got the time don't worry about it um, yeah and then just fry it off or grill it can put it on the barbecue it does stick quite easily so make sure you're either using a non-stick pan or your pan's got lots of oil in there just to stop it sticking to the bottom because it then as soon as it sticks it becomes really difficult to turn it over it's a chandra's vegan with a vengeance it was one of the first vegan cookbooks that i bought and her stewed tofu and potatoes with miso gravy was probably one of the first times i cooked tofu that's a great dish just very hearty warming very easy to make as well so yeah you can have it quite simply just you know in something that's like a sauce that's highly seasoned and flavored and it works great in terms of the silken tofu it's very handy as like a scrambled egg so you can make a tofu scramble you can use uh, extra firm or firm anything you like but i found doing it with the silken tofu it gives much more of a scrambled egg kind of texture so i just cooked it down in a frying pan added some carrot juice to give it that kind of yellow color that scrambled eggs have got and used coconut cream to give it the rich fattiness. It was delicious. <laughs> and some black salt just to get some eggy flavor. I've used the freezing technique with silken tofu. And what happens is when you defrost it, liquid comes out of it and it sort of, in, it saves you having to cook all of the excess liquid out on the stove. And then I use that to make um, some vegan cottage cheese because it goes in lovely little curds. And it's just like dairy cottage cheese. I did some natural yogurt and a bit of lactic acid powder to give it that tanginess. And I used the same technique again to make like a hard boiled egg substitute. So I used that in the kedgeri, which typically is smoked haddock, rice and eggs, onions, spices, that kind of thing. So I cooked this down until it went firm into little lumps. And then again, a bit of black salt for egg flavour. Silken also work. Should we say hi to YouTube? Yes, we man. Let's. Here's Shadow. I know we've got some fans amongst you. Are you gonna say hi? Are you gonna say hi? Silken also works really well in sweet things. So I've used this to make ice cream. I did the marmalade ice cream 
for the ice cream sandwiches and then I also made cranberry sauce ice cream with this pecan sweet potato pie. In the ice cream it was to add a bit of bulk but also creaminess along with some coconut cream. I also used the silicon in the pecan pie filling uh, to combine it with the pecans instead of eggs like you would in a, in a non-vegan one. It works really well as an egg substitute as well so anything that needs eggs in it you can sometimes use silken tofu. I've mixed some silken tofu into a seitan mix as well when I did the wash the flour turkey roulades. So I've added in silken tofu to the gluten that I'd washed and then had to thicken that back up again with some mashed potato powder. Works really nice, it gives a nice texture to it. Hopefully that's given you a bit more insight into tofu. So we've got a few ideas of things that you can do with it. So if you're thinking about adding more plants into your diet and didn't want to have to resort to tofu, now you know you can and it'll still taste delicious. <laughs> If you do need any advice or you've got any questions, stick them in the comments and I'll do what I can to answer those for you. Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon for more ingredient deep dives and vegan recipes landing in your inbox each week. And then head over to this one.